Hey, what's up? I'm Mr. Hanish, and welcome to my flipped classroom. Coming to you live from my classroom. It's not really live, but that's okay. It sounds cooler. We are starting a unit on Asia, and a great way to preview it is to examine the physical geography of the continent. Now, since Asia is such a huge place, we will be breaking it into smaller, more manageable chunks and divide everything into regions. Japan and Korea, China, which includes Mongolia and Taiwan, South Asia, which for us will be India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Bhutan, and Southeast Asia, which is basically everything else. Let's start with Japan and Korea. The first thing you notice about Japan and Korea is that Japan is an island nation and Korea is a peninsula. That means that water will play a big role for both. Being mostly or completely surrounded by water has made expansion difficult for each, but also kept them relatively safe from outside influence throughout their history. Now, think about the fact that both of them are also relatively mountainous, making good farmland hard to come by. Think about what that means for the population. As population grows, there is no space to spread out, and the amount of food grown on available land must be maximized. This is a problem we in the United States have never really faced. Northern Korea and northern Japan have humid continental climates, much like here in Wisconsin. It gives them a long, cold winter with a short growing season. Meanwhile, the southern parts of Korea and Japan have humid subtropical climates, much like Florida. I wonder if old people leave North Korea to live in South Korea like they leave Wisconsin for Florida. Mmm, DMZ, never mind. The last notable thing about the physical geography here has to do with tectonic plates. Japan is located on what we call the Ring of Fire. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, burns, burns. The ring I had to, I had to. Anyway, the Ring of Fire is the name given to the Pacific Rim along tectonic plate boundaries that are especially active and create numerous volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, and tsunamis. Japan definitely gets its fair share of them. In fact, 10% of the world's volcanic eruptions occur in Japan. And as recently as 2011, tsunamis have proven what devastation they can cause in Japan. Now let's recap. Japan is an island. Korea is a peninsula. Their climates are relatively similar and differ from north to south. They each have limited space which causes issues with farming and population density, and Japan is especially prone to natural disasters. Part 2 will focus on China. The first thing you notice about this region we will call China is that it is actually China, Mongolia, and Taiwan. This region is simply called China because even though I like to tell you that all countries are important, frankly, Mongolia is about as unimportant as it gets, and they haven't been relevant for hundreds of years. And Taiwan is technically recognized as part of China by China and seen as the real China by the people of Taiwan. Short story long, we look at all three together. There's definitely a wide variety of landforms and climate here. The north is mostly covered by the vast, rocky, and ridiculously cold at times Gobi Desert including nearly all of Mongolia. Western China is mostly highlands such as the plateau of Tibet and the Himalayas, the world's tallest mountain range in the extreme southwest. As you can imagine, the north, west, and southwest are not the greatest areas for farming or transportation. Therefore, the population is much smaller here than it is further east. The east and central parts of China include fertile farmlands such as the North China Plain, and large river valleys like those of the Huang He, aka Yellow River, as well as the Changjiang or Yangtze River, which is China's main water transportation route. As an island, Taiwan is somewhat isolated, but it's clo close enough to mainland China that it has been maintaining a weird sort of I'm your dad and you disobeyed me, but also you kicked me out of my own house, which I still claim is my house, but you live in it, and I live in the small studio apartment down the street type of relationship. I promise that will make more sense in a later video. So let's recap. China, Mongolia, and Taiwan have a wide variety of climates and landforms. Mongolia and northern China are desert, western China is highlands, southwest is mountainous, 
and eastern China and Taiwan are full of fertile farmland and have become the population and trade centers. Part 3 will be about South Asia. South Asia is what we call a subcontinent or a large landmass that's not quite large enough to be its own continent. In the north, the Himalayas stretch through Bhutan, Nepal, and northern India and Pakistan, creating a large natural barrier between this region and China. To the south, India and Bangladesh create an incredibly large peninsula surrounded by the Arabian Sea, Indian Ocean, and Bay of Bengal. During the summer, warm, moist air is carried inland from the Indian Ocean until its path is blocked by the Himalayas. This causes clouds to form that dump heavy rains on India. In the winter months, the direction of the winds change, and dry air from the Himalayas travels south towards the ocean. This pattern of changes in the climate is called a monsoon. The people of this region have become accustomed to the monsoon, and they've learned to grow moisture-intensive crops during the summer months, and crops requiring a drier climate in the winter. It also helps that there are three large river systems to irrigate the region, the Indus, Ganges, and Brahmaputra, as well as their tributaries, which supply river to well over one and a half billion people that live in South Asia. Let's recap. South Asia is definitely impacted by a monsoon climate, which changes based on the seasons and has one really wet season and one really dry season. It is a subcontinent. South Asia is also home to three major river valleys that keep it well irrigated. Finally, we have Southeast Asia, a region made up of two large peninsulas and two large island groups. The peninsulas are the Indochina Peninsula, which includes Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, and the eastern part of Thailand, and the Malay Peninsula, which includes Ma Myanmar, Western Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore. The Malay Archipelago is the large series of islands that makes up Malaysia, Indonesia, and East Timor, with the Philippines forming its own archipelago to the north of that. These peninsulas and archipelagos are crisscrossed by a number of gulfs, seas, straits, and oceans. There are also rivers, including the Mekong River, that provide fresh water and drain the peninsulas. Most of this region lies squarely in the tropics and sees its fair share of hot, humid, and rainy weather as a result. Tropical rainforests are home to a wide variety of plant and animal life throughout Southeast Asia. Much of the mainland, however, has a savanna climate and is at the mercy of monsoon winds, much like South Asia was. Like Japan, much of Southeast Asia, especially the archipelagos, lie on the ring of fire too. I fell into a burning ring of fire I went down, down. I had to, I had to. <laughs> this makes them just as susceptible to volcanic activity and tsunamis, as well as tropical storms called typhoons. Let's recap. Southeast Asia can generally be divided into two main peninsulas and two main archipelagos. There's easy water access with lots of gulfs, seas, and oceans nearby. And the peninsulas experience monsoon climates while the islands are almost exclusively tropical. The region is at risk of dangerous natural disasters like tsunamis, volcanoes, and typhoons. That's all I have for now, so go study, and until next time, buh bye I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, 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 the ring of fire, the ring of fire.